Hello guys, welcome back. This is the part 2 of Canly et al. experiment. If you haven't watched the previous video, I would advise you to do so, just so as to know the context to this, um, this one. Um, so today we are going to try and critically evaluate Canly et al. experiment and we will evaluate it in terms of both methodology and ethics. Um, as you know, Cambridge International has changed the question paper pattern last year, but looking at the specimen paper on the CIA website, we can see that paper 1 still has a, a 10 mark evaluator question in it. So how do we tackle uh, such a question? Uh, you definitely require an in-depth understanding of both methodology and ethical guidelines in order to answer such a question. All right. So there are a few things that I believe you have to make sure you do when you answer such a question. You should analyze both pros and cons of the methods used in the study. And it should be in a balance. Sometimes um, as the same uh, uh, point that you analyze can, can be positive and negative or an advantage and a disadvantage to um, this study. So you have to keep these things in balance. It should not be a one-sided approach. The same thing goes to, um, you know, analyzing um, ethics and methodology. Um, it is expected that you consider both ethics and methodology unless the question specifies the kind of evaluation that they are looking for. Otherwise, always go for both. Um, and the third thing and the most important thing I'd say is that any point that you write uh, in your evaluation, you should make sure that you link it to the experiment that you are looking at. Right? You have to pick examples from the experiment that you have and you have to link it uh, to the point that you write. Hmm? Now, okay, let's, let's see how the methods used in a study can be evaluated first. All right? We'll start with the methods. Um, the first thing that you, sh you can probably look into is a sample of the study. Right? The question you should ask when you see the sample of a study is, is the sample representative enough and does it make the study generalizable? That is the question that you should ask. Uh, when you look at Canley et al. study, you can see that all the participants are females, uh, making it a less generalizable study. Right. Uh, but the researchers have justified why they have used all females in their study. They have mentioned a um, few previous studies which shows that women are more likely to report intense emotional experiences and show more physiological reactivity that, than men when it comes to balance judgment. Um, and they have mentioned this in their published paper. So they have given a justification as on why they have used all females, but still it is, you know, reducing the generalizability of the study. Again, the sample size, it matters, right? This study has only 10 participants, okay? And so is that a generalizable number? Um, well, you can't really say that it is unless there is at least 30 participants in a study. So that makes it, um, you know, that's a good number. 30 is considered to be a good number. So if less than that, you would say that maybe they could have used more participants in order to make it much more generalizable. Um, let's look at the type of experiment, all right? Um, um, it sure was a lab experiment and therefore it is in a control setting, uh, which is far away from a real life condition, unlike a field or a naturalistic experiment, right? Uh, this is one main criteria that cannot be missed when it comes to evaluation, the kind of experiment that is used. A lab experiment will always be far away from real life situation, bringing it low on ecological validity. 
right? So, for example, in this experiment, the participants were shown emotionally evoking scenes. Um, what they experienced uh, will be will it be the same when it comes to an actual real life uh, scene? Not really, right? Uh, it what they experienced might be actually different when it comes to real life settings. So that makes um, the ecological validity go low in a lab experiment. So this can be interpreted as a downside to the experiment, but at the same time, a lab setting can increase the objectivity of the experiment. In this case, they have used fMRI to record brain activity. So what can be more objective than that? So that, that again increases the reliability of the study and increases and adds value to the study. So it's not all bad all the time. It, the same point can be both positive and negative. How about controls used in the experiment? Right. So it increases the reliability of the experiment, any controls in general. And can we at all, they have used few controls, um, you know, were installed and those would be levels of arousal and balance of, of uh, scenes that they chose. So they made sure that, that they picked certain range of uh, balance and arousal and then they made sure that they showed these to all the participants that they used in the study. The same with the time gap between the scenes. They made sure that the same uh, across all the participants and the time that these scenes were shown to the participants were also kept same throughout the experiment. So having a controlled environment and having controlled procedures will make it easier for the researchers who intend to repeat or replicate the study. So that is a positive uh, to the study and it definitely increases the reliability of the study. Um, if you're confused with the concepts of reliability and validity, you can watch my next video um, trying to unravel the enigma behind this reliability and validity there. Um, so you might like that, like it. Um, another point that you can look into is the type of data that is used in a study. So if, a, if qualitative data is used in a study, you can say that it definitely increases uh, the validity of a study. But in this study, only quantitative data is used and one can argue that ex this experiment is even reductionist in nature um, as it tries to quantify um, emotions into just numbers or just, just you know, categorize it. Um, so you can say that they could have uh, maybe included more qualitative uh, data in order to increase the validity of the study. Um, I think we have covered most of the methodological aspects um, of the uh, study now. Now let's move on to the ethical side of it. Um, the most common points that you generally cover under this area um, would be informed consent, protection and from psychological and physical pain, right to withdraw, dis deception, confidentiality, right to privacy, and probably de debriefing. Deception can be ruled out in this case and consequently um, debriefing. But one concern about the study would be protection from emotional harm. The researchers have definitely manipulated the emotions of the participants and one can argue this is a violation of ethical guidelines. Uh, with this, I believe we have covered all of the major points. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free free to comment and I can get back to you through another video or if you have any video suggestions still you can add it up in the comment se section. Um, that's all for now. Hope it helped and thank you so much.